Okay, hi there, and welcome to an important video focusing on the key advantages and disadvantages of monopoly power in markets. This is an updated 2019 presentation. So market power, of course, is when firms have significant power over the prices they charge, and also, of course, where they have uh, the potential to block the entry of new firms using barriers to entry. The extent of market power depends on the degree to which the market is concentrated. So markets such as the London Underground, the transport service market in London, London Underground essentially is close to a pure monopoly, although it depends on how we define the mode of transport. Tesco remains the leading UK grocery, grocery retailer, although Aldi and Lidl are making gains as we speak. And of course, Asda and Sainsbury's had their proposed merger blocked by the Competition and Markets Authority. Cost of coffee, if you measure it by the number of stores and sales as the dominant coffee firm in what's essentially a competitive oligopoly, Costa recently, of course, bought by Coca-Cola. Pepsi and Coca-Cola in the canned drinks market, essentially dominating the duopoly. Google is a near pure monopoly with nearly 90% of web search, particularly through mobile. And in the telecoms market, BT has a dominant market position with more than 40% of the market. So let's go through the key disadvantages of monopoly. If you get a question on market power, monopoly, the extent to which monopoly leads to a, a loss or a diminution of market power, what are the key points that you can make in an exam? Well, let's go through five, five of them. The first is, and it's the key one, is that the main argument is that a monopoly produces a welfare loss. Uh, there is a market failure compared to competitive market conditions. Linked to that, the price that a profit-maximising monopoly will charge will be higher than the competition, higher than marginal cost, higher than average cost, leading to a loss of allocative efficiency. This then links to the question of equity, so if you have a monopoly charging high prices, this can have a regressive effect on the purchasing power, on the real living standards of lower income households and families, particularly families with a large number of people living on, on low incomes, unable to save much, but facing oftentimes monopoly prices. The absence of genuine real market competition may also lead to what we call X inefficiencies, Wasteful advertising is a good example. So too is organisational slack, low productivity amongst managers and employees because of a lack of competition. Higher prices, of course, also limit the final output in a market, and that may cause fewer or less economies of scale being exploited. Indeed, a monopoly may grow too big and uh, lead to internal diseconomies of scale. The key point is that if we assume a monopoly aims to maximise profit, then a monopoly will tend to charge a price well above cost, as we can see in this diagram. The monopoly price is P1, the unit cost is C1, so there's a big area of monopoly profit, and the price is well above the marginal cost of production. Output is lower than we would want from a socially efficient point of view. Now, that is your standard monopoly diagram. Keep in mind, however, that the monopolies cannot charge any price they want. Ultimately, the monopoly firm is always constrained by the demand curve, both the level of demand and also the, the elasticity of demand. Now, for higher analysis marks in your exams, to get to the higher levels of analysis and to work towards that top grade, it's always important to put in a welfare point. So we talked about efficiency, a loss of efficiency in monopoly pricing. Also consider the deadweight loss. The allocatively efficient output is at point B, where price average revenue equals marginal cost. The output is at Q1, so therefore there's a welfare loss shown by this triangle A, B, C. That's a welfare loss diagram. Just mentioning that and showing it on a diagram, considering the welfare cost, 
is an important part of getting those top analysis marks in your exam. So well worth practicing that diagram. On the other hand, what about the, the potential advantages of monopoly power? Well, there are many. Uh, monopoly is obviously operating on a bigger scale. They may well be able to achieve economies of scale, which leads to lower costs for consumers, lower prices for consumers, ultimately. The monopoly profit that we talked about in the previous diagram, there it is in green. The monopoly profit, of course, may well be used productively. Produce a surplus has a value. It may well help to fund research and development. It doesn't have to necessarily go into the pockets of shareholders and executive pay packets. It could be used to fund research and development, which can have a positive effect. Governments, in theory, stand to gain extra tax revenues from monopoly profits. Monopolies can also be regulated by industry regulators who can set conditions of service, quality targets, standards of service targets, etc. Sometimes a monopoly can cross-subsidise. They can use the profits from one part of the business to lower prices to provide accessible services for other people, for example, bus transport. And having enough scaled businesses, <coughs> businesses that have achieved significant economies of scale, can also be important on a macroeconomic level to improve a country's price and non-price competitiveness. So here's our core slide if you want to take a, a look at this one, looking at some of the potential advantages from monopoly. The profits can be used to fund investment and R&D, which in theory could lead to gains in dynamic efficiency. A natural monopoly may benefit from big economies of scale, and it may well be justified to have one major supplier. It may be state-owned, for example, but a better use of resources to have one supplier to fully exploit those economies of scale. Uh, interestingly, a domestic monopoly often does face global competition. Depends how you define the market. And if, in which case, you need a domestic firm to have scale and market power to compete successfully with those big transnational companies. Monopolistic firms can and are regulated. The industry regulator can act as a proxy consumer, perhaps to help keep prices down and hopefully service standards high. And I'm sure you will have covered in revision the advantages and disadvantages of price discrimination. So price discrimination, again, in theory, can help some lower income families on a limited budget to access important goods and services at lower prices. Here's an important diagram, potentially, if you want to emphasise and accentuate the advantages from monopoly. So this diagram is taking a, a downward slope in demand curve and uh, the cost curves MC1 and AC1, perhaps the cost curves of a competitive firm. But down to the right here, these cost curves MC2, AC2 might be the cost curves for a monopoly achieving big scale economies. If that's the case, their profit maximising output is Q2 and that gives a lower price than perhaps if the market was competitive. Uh, what I've done in the left-hand corner here is think about a little chain of reasoning. Let's work through it. If a monopoly can achieve substantial internal scale economies, then the marginal and average cost of production is lower, as you can see in our diagram here. As a result, little connective phrase, the profit maximising price may be lower than if the market was less highly concentrated. And of course, this has complications, implications, effects for the level of consumer surplus, and consumer welfare generally. So an, an important point, don't be afraid to use an analysis diagram to support the argument. Natural monopoly, can we have a separate topic video on this on the Tutor to website? But areas where perhaps the big scale economies, London Underground, network industries, energy grids, perhaps messaging and web search, Perhaps these are industries where the natural monopoly defence could come into play. This is my uh, almost my penultimate slide, if you like. It's just basically showing how you can compare a monopoly, a pure monopoly, with a contestable market. And it's important to be able to just go through, take your time on this, but how many firms there are, what are the nature of barriers to entry, and in particular the extent to which each market structure turns out to be efficient. Allocative productive, dynamic, please, please make use of all three 
of these types of efficiency in your exams. Let me finish with five key evaluation points if you get a question on monopoly power in markets. Here we go. First of all, it's important to judge those businesses that do have monopoly power on a case by case basis. Please don't assume automatically that monopoly power is bad and that uh, there's a case for some form of intervention by the government. Judge it on the basis of what firms do, not what the textbook says they might do. Look at the evidence, particularly if it's a data response question. Secondly, uh, the regulators have a key job to do. They can be an effective surrogate for competition if little actual competition exists. We live in a world of rapid, fast-changing technology. Um, so even those firms that appear to have a monopoly today can sometimes see that monopoly power erode and dis disappear pretty quickly. We've seen that in lots of markets. For example, the black, cap, the black uh, taxi cabs in London, for example. Barriers to entry in many markets, not all, but many markets, are coming down. The barriers to entry are making or reducing, making markets more contestable. And crucially, uh, monopoly power depends on part on how we actually defend, sort of define the market. Is it a local market? Is it a national or regional market? Is it a global market? Market definition does matter. Ultimately, high market concentration, monopoly power, does not always signal the absence of competition. It can actually just reflect the success of businesses in just being best of breed, the top firms in the market, they are providing better quality products more efficiently at a better price than their rivals. So lots to look at. Clearly, monopoly power is a big area on your theme three microeconomics. Hopefully, this has been a useful quick update. Thank you very much.